So today we have a number of very popular oil filters and you might have seen a previous film that we did with the same filters you see here but that was a very very basic film and what I mean by that is we went over the price points how many miles you can get out of the filter the cost and that sort of thing but today we're going to the next step meaning the number of inlet holes in the base plate the material material used for the bypass material is it a stamped piece of steel versus coil spring what is the material used for the filter itself? Is it wire back? That sort of thing. So it's really the next step in a sense. So we'll start with the cheapest filter or the lowest costing filter, which is the STP. We'll move up to Mobile One. And this will hopefully will give you a better idea of what you're paying for. Before we begin, I just want to state that every filter here is made for the same vehicle, a 2010 Subaru. The one exception is the Fram. I could not find a Fram Extra Guard short notice for the 2010 Subaru. However, I just want to show you what it looks like on the insides just because this is a very, very popular oil filter. So if you notice that this filter is so much larger compared to the other four, it's just because this is not made for the same vehicle. But nevertheless, we'll go over the features compared to the other guys. Now starting with the STP, you often find this on sale. If you purchase five quarts of such and such oil for $21, $22, they'll include an STP oil filter. This is really designed for conventional motor oil and to be replaced every three months or 3,000 miles. Well over a decade ago, I had a Z28, and this is really the oil that, or the filter that I used, and I replaced the oil every 3,000 miles had that car for maybe 220,000 miles and never once had a motor problem, but I always change the oil. Uh, the one nice thing for the price point, you do get metal end caps. The spine is metal as well. And uh, even if you look at the spacing, it's not that bad. I mean, this, this that's the, really the only thick point right there. But for $4.50, the cheapest filter here, again, it's not that bad. The filter material is cellulose. Okay, on your, on your more expensive filters, it goes to synthetic. Sometimes you get a blend like the, with the Bosch. But it's, again, if you're running conventional, you're changing your oil every three months or 3,000 miles, this is perfectly fine. Now, let me just quickly go over what every part here is, essentially. On the bottom, you have the base plate. On the STP, you have, you have eight inlet holes. And then, of course, you have a gasket on the base plate or attached to the base plate and of course whenever you change your motor oil just put a little da dab of motor oil and this allows a better seal when you attach the new oil filter but also when you remove the oil filter it makes it a little bit easier to come off okay so eight inlet holes on the STP and then moving up to this guy this happens to be the anti drain back valve now the whole point behind this is when you turn off your vehicle, instead of all the motor oil draining back into the filter, this allows some oil to be left behind so you don't have a dry start the next time you start your vehicle. Now where you see a difference is the material used. Now STP and Fram happen to use rubber and then the Bosch, STP extended and Mobile One use silicone. Now the main difference essentially is that rubber, or excuse me, I should say silicone is a much, much better material when it comes to very, very low temperatures and very, very high temperatures. I don't remember the exact rating off the top of my head. I believe it's up to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Silicone is uh, rated up to maybe down to below 80 Fahrenheit, minus 80 Fahrenheit, if I remember that correctly. The rubber won't withstand that temperature as well as silicone. So that's, the whole, that's what you're paying for in these higher costing filters, for one. Now moving to the next level up, you have essentially either a coil spring as you can see with this guy excuse me this is your coil spring or a stamped piece of steel and this is really two functions that you find here the first thing is that this material this uh, component not only keeps everything compressed in the can but the other the other point behind it is if for some reason this starts the filter starts to get clogged up and obviously you don't want that to happen because then the motor can starve of oil. So you have a little valve in here. Whoops. This is called a bypass material, by the way. It's a bypass spring. And what it does, as you can see, it opens up. There we go. Hold on a second. There we go. It opens up, okay? So the whole point behind that is if this, if the flow rate just degrades and you just need oil immediately or maybe under a really hard acceleration, this little guy would open up and it would allow oil 
to feed into the motor. Okay, so that's your your uh, uh, your bypass material. So anti drain back valve, bypass material. Again, metal end caps on the STP and cellulose material. So that's the gist on the STP. Again, for the bunny, it's a fine filter as long as you you're running conventional. Change your oil every three months, three thousand miles, you'd be fine. Now the next one coming over is a Fram Extra Guard. This is an interesting filter in a sense that people either like them or they hate them. And the reason behind that is the end caps. And as you can see, it's the only one here of the group that it does not have metal end caps. It's I don't I wouldn't say it's cardboard. It's some other kind of material. Uh, this is not metal as far as I could tell. Also, maybe it's a very thin piece of metal for the uh, spine. But what I will say about this, we this is right up to 5,000 miles, conventional or synthetic motor oil. Runs for around five bucks if you buy it on its own. But I did cut open this filter on a previous film after around 6,500 miles, I think it was. And the way that you see these end caps now, it was exactly the same after 6,600 miles. It was almost like nothing degraded. So I'm sure Fram did a lot of testing uh, with these filters. I have received comments, people, people saying that the Fram killed their motor. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if they went over the mileage, but nevertheless, take from this what you may. But that's the one thing about the Fram that makes some people nervous in a sense. But I think if you just replace the oil every 5,000 miles, you'd be perfectly fine, to be quite honest, against me for conventional or synthetic. Now, regarding the inlet holes, this has, I believe, 12. Yeah, this has 12 inlet holes for the filter. And then, again, this is rubber for the, for the anti-drain back valve. Bypass materials, stamped piece of steel. You have a coil spring. Again, that opens up. Cellulose is the material used. Again, 5,000 miles. And the uh, the one cool thing with the frame is the grip. You get a nice grip, um, which is a plus. You know, which is a plus. The the only one above this is K&N when they give you a one inch nut on top, which is so cool. I love that with K&N. But nevertheless, that's a nice little uh, feature that they have here. Now the next guy up is Bosch. Now the Bosch is where you start to see things improve in a sense. Now this is again around five bucks. This is seven dollars. But right off the bat, check out the spacing on the Bosch. It's very, very good. The material is a cellulose blend, uh, so it's probably also mixed in with synthetic. That's my guess. But the spacing is very good for $7. Metal end caps, metal spine as well. And when it comes to the bypass material, or excuse me, the anti-drain back valve, this is where you find silicone. Okay, so you're not running rubber anymore. Now you're at silicone. The inlet holes, you have eight. And, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's a very, very good filter for the money. Regarding how often to change it, Bosch recommends follow your vehicle's manufacturer recommended interval. So, instead of Bosch saying change it every 7,000 miles, just follow what your Subaru says or what Honda says or Chevrolet. Whatever you have, just follow what they state on the recommended interval is, and you'll be perfectly fine. You can run synthetic or conventional with Bosch. I like Bosch. I run these guys quite a lot. I, I do like, for the money, I think they're terrific. Now, the next guy up is STP Extended Life. Now, you can run this up to 10,000 miles, conventional or synthetic motor oil. Spacing is very, very good. These run for around $10, so you're, getting, you're starting to get up there in price. But look at the spacing. Very, very good. I mean, look, you take a look at STP Extended Life, 99% efficiency compared to 93 on the STP, but again, $4.50 versus 10. So big difference. Regarding the material, it's now synthetic. It's a synthetic material for the, uh, for the media as opposed to cellulose, okay? Regarding the, uh, the end caps, they are metal, metal spine, metal end caps on both ends, and they use a coil spring to hold everything in place, which is pretty cool. You figure that has to be, be a little bit more to manufacture. They actually make this in Korea. Everything else here is made in the USA, but this is actually made in Korea. And the anti-drain back valve is silicone, and then your inlet holes happen to be eight. A lot of times, again, you find these on sale if you purchase so many quarts of oil. I know AutoZone sells these uh, uh, as a combo if you also purchase uh, Pennzoil, Platinum, or Mobile One, something like that. And then your last guy here is Mobile One. Everyone has pretty much heard of Mobile One. 99.9% .9 efficiency up to 15,000 miles. So pretty amazing, 15,000 miles, 
$13 for the filter. It's really made only for synthetic. I guess you can run conventional, but why would you, to be quite honest? So synthetic motor oil. Uh, you have silicone on the anti-drain back valve. Your inlet holes are six in this case. The diameter is much, much thicker compared to the other guys. So that's, I'm sure it's perfectly fine. There's a stamp piece of steel, and then you have a coil spring that pops open like so. So that's essentially what you're paying for. Uh, again, I don't think this is wire-backed. Uh, Wix XP is wire-backed. Amsoil, Royal Purple, we have videos on those that are all wire-backed. K and N is not. However, K and N is quite interesting that the surface area, and what I mean by that is I'm going to do future films on each filter on its own, and I'm going to cut open the filter and then measure out the filter and do a calculation on how many square inches uh, filter you get. And on the k and N, I remember I just spread it across this whole table. It was huge. But, uh, but nevertheless, we'll see what these come back with. But hopefully this gives you a pretty darn good idea of what you can expect uh, or what you're really paying for when you buy these oil filters. The one thing, whatever you go with, just follow the manufacturer's recommended interval to replace your oil filter and you'll be fine. Uh, again, with the frame, a lot of people are nervous about this material on the end. I cut one open at almost 7,000 miles, so it was almost 2,000 miles over its limit. It was perfectly fine. I'll, I'll include that, uh, that link in the description box below if you're curious to see that video, but it was perfectly fine. It was perfect, perfectly fine. But uh, yeah, so thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.